How can we determine a ship's weight, including her cargo, fuel, and even passengers, while she's floating? Is it really possible for something so massive to know how heavy it is? In this video, we'll break down the basics of ship stability by exploring three fundamental concepts, displacement, density, and volume. A solid object floats in a liquid, if its average density is less than the liquid's density. Woods and plastics float because their densities are lower than the density of water. When we say density, it is a measure of how much mass is contained in a given volume. The density of any given substance is its mass per unit volume. Freshwater has a density of 1000 kg per cubic meter. Saltwater is slightly denser, at 1025 kg per cubic meter. The steel has a density of approximately 7850 kg per cubic meter which varies depending on the type or grade of the steel, which is almost eight times denser than water. So, how can massive steel ships stay afloat? The answer lies in Archimedes' principle, which states, an object submerged in a fluid is subjected to an upward buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid it displaces. In simpler terms, a ship sinks into the water, until it pushes aside or displaces an amount of water, equal to its own weight. When that happens, the buoyant force balances the ship's weight, that is why she is floating. But weight, steel is much denser than water. Here's the trick. A ship isn't a solid block of steel. Most of its volume is air. The ship's hull is carefully designed to enclose large empty spaces, like cargo holds, cabins, and tanks. This means the ship's average density, the density of steel plus air, is lower than water's density. So even though steel sinks, a steel ship floats because it's mostly hollow, displacing enough water to balance its weight. The law of flotation, derived from Archimedes' principle, states that, when a body is wholly or partially immersed in a liquid, it experiences an upthrust apparent loss of mass, termed buoyancy force, equal to the mass of a displaced liquid. Now, the term displacement of the ship, or any floating object, is the number of tons of water it displaces. It refers to the weight of the water a ship pushes aside, or displaces, when she is floating. According to Archimedes' principle, displacement is also equal to the total weight of the ship, including the ship's structure, cargo, fuel, ballast and fresh water, crew and provisions, and anything else on board. If a ship displaces 30,000 tons of water, that means the entire ship weighs 30,000 tons. Let's calculate the displacement of a box-shaped vessel with a length of 100 meters, a breadth of 18 meters, and floating at a draft of 5 meters in salt water with a density of 1.025 tons per cubic meter. Draft is the vertical distance between the bottom of the ship's keel and the waterline. To calculate the displacement, let's consider the formula, mass is equal to volume times density. The displacement of a box-shaped vessel is equal to the volume of water she displaces multiplied by the density of the water. The ship's underwater volume is equal to the volume of the water she displaces, which is 9,000 cubic meters. If we multiplied it by the water density, the displacement of a box-shaped vessel is 9,225 tons. To determine the underwater volume of a ship-shaped vessel, we can use a method known as Simpson's Rule. However, when we are on board, we actually extract the value of the ship's displacement from the hydrostatic table. But first, we need to determine the ship's true mean draft, or hydrostatic draft. Assuming this is the ship's hydrostatic table provided by the ship's builder, and the ship's true mean draft is 8.52 meters, the ship's displacement is 19,113 metric tons. If you are not familiar with the concept of ship's draft, 
and how to calculate the true mean draft, I made a separate video explaining it in detail. You'll find the link in the description below. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, thanks for watching, bye.